Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, we're doing question 10 of May June 2024, question very mathematics paper one. The topic is application of calculus. So let's go. They are saying EHGF is a rectangle. So you are told that EFGH is a rectangle. This screen shaded or dotted part here is a rectangle. They went on to say HE is produced x squared centimeters to N and EH is produced x squared centimeters to P. They are saying now HE, his HE, H to E is extended x squared centimeters. So this distance from E to N is x squared, right? At the same time, they said EH, which is this distance from E to H, has been extended x squared centimeters to, to P. No problem. They are saying NF produced intersects PG at M to form an isosceles triangle M and B with NM equal to MP. So they are saying NF, which is here is NF, is, 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 uh, is produced, which is extended to meet uh, PG at M. You can see here is your NF produced to M and PG produced to M. So PG. Uh, the extension of PG and NF intersect at M. That's what they are saying. No problem. They are saying now, D lies on NP, where MD is perpendicular to NP. So they are saying D lies on this line here, on the base of the, of the rectangle, uh, of the isosceles triangle, uh, MPN or MNP. So here is D, you can see D. Is on the base of this isosceles triangle. Here is D, right? And you are also told that your MD, which is this vertical line here, is perpendicular to NP. That's what they are telling you. And then they went on to say that the length of NP is four centimeters. Uh, NP, which is the entire base of this isosceles triangle MNP, is four centimeters, and the height of this triangle MD is three centimeters. So the height of this triangle MD is three centimeters. So that's what you're told. No problem. So now let's go to 10.1. What are they saying at 10.1? They're saying, show that the area of EFGH is given by A is equal to 6X squared minus 3X to the power 4. They're, show, they're saying, show that the area of the shaded area, right? Or which is the area of a rectangle, of this rectangle, is given by this. That's what they want us to do. They want us to show that the area of this green rectangle here is given by this guy here. Here is it. That's what they want us to, serve, to do. No problem. How do we do this? There are many ways you can approach it. You can use similarity, but I fear that some students might be uncomfortable with similarity. So I would rather just use um, the knowledge or what I think is common sense from what you can see. It's going to be very unnice and maybe tedious, but it will be clear the whole time. So it will not be very nice, but it's a logical way of doing it, using what you have. It, but you can use your general knowledge of the topic, right? But I don't want to go there. I would rather use what I have in front of me so that I don't have to to go back and explain similarity and other concepts on this video because I don't want to do that. So, they want us to show that the area of this rectangle is given by this thing. So, what is an area of, how do you calculate the area of a rectangle? An area, of, or an area of a rectangle is called what? Length times value. That's how you find an area of a rectangle. It's called length times breadth. If you're looking at this uh, rectangle of yours, what is your length? My length is EH, right? What is my breadth? My breadth is EF. You can see over there is EF. So if I'm calculating the, this area of a rectangle, it's equal to length, which is EH, times what? times breadth. What is your breadth? Your breadth is 
E F. So A is zero. The area of your rectangle is length times breadth. Your length is E H. Your breadth is E F. That's what you have. No problem. So what do you do from here? You go and find your E H now in terms of X because you want it to look like this at the end. Go and find your E H in terms of X and find your E F in terms of, of X of in terms of so, where is the H? The H is here, right? And if you're looking at the H, you can see that it lies on NP. It, 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 it is part of NP. NP is the entire length of this triangle, which is the entire length of the base of this triangle. That's what NP is. So, EH is, is a portion of that base length of this triangle, right? So, now, what we can do, because we want EH, right, we can say, okay, NP, which is the entire length, is equal to the NE N -E plus EH plus NP. So, which means this entire length is what? This entire length is NP, right? So, if we want the, to find the length of NP, the length of NP, we're given is 4, but the length of NP can also be expressed as this distance NE plus this distance EH plus this distance HP. That's what we're going to do. So we can say, okay, the entire length NP. So NP is equal to what? NP is the entire length of this base of this triangle, which is the, the, the floor of this triangle. So you can find this length NP by adding NE, which is this distance over here, which is this distance here, NE. Right? N E plus what? Add N E plus E H. E H is from here to there. Plus E H. Plus N plus H P, which is the last bit now. Plus H P. So, if you look at those added three distances there, you can see that adding N E and E H and H P all forms N P. So N P is called the sum of those things. So what do you do? You then substitute. What is NP? NP is the entire length of this space, which is what? Which is 4. Is equal to NE. What is NE? NE is this distance from N to E, which is what? Which is X squared. Plus EH, which is what we're looking for. Because what we want to find? We want to find this EH over here. So plus EH, plus what? Plus HP. What is HP? HP is X squared as well. Because HP is this distance over here, and we're told that this distance is equal to x squared. So we have x squared. Then we group the like terms, so we get that 4 is equal to eh. This and these are like terms. Plus x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Right? Therefore, your eh is equal to 4 minus 2x squared. So this is the distance of eh. So we have this distance here, eh to be, uh, we have this distance EH to be 4 minus 2x squared. So now, our EH, what is our EH? Our EH is B, right? Sorry. So we have EH to be 4 minus 2x squared times EF. What is EF? Your EF is B. So now, your area of your, of your rectangle, right, is equal to EH, which is this. So it's 4. Minus 2x squared times EF. EF is equal to what? Your EF is equal to B. So the area of a rectangle is equal to EH, which we found here, times EF, which we given as B there. But look now, if you multiply these two out, your, your area of your rectangle will be in terms of X and B. But you only asked to, to show or find the area of this rectangle in terms of x. So now, we know to, we need to get rid of that b over there. So let's go and try to find the value of b. Maybe we can find the numerical value of b, or maybe we can find the value of b in terms of x. Fine. Where is b? b is here. If you look at b, b is a, a breadth of this triangle here. So here's what we can do. We can look at three shapes if you want, right? We can say we have three shapes here, or maybe four. 
You see what we did with this length? Because we said that in, the entire base is four centimeters. And then we divided this. We divided the length of the base of our triangle so that we can be able to find EH. This is what we did here, right? So we can do a similar thing and look at three shapes. First shape is the big shape, the big triangle, right? So we can look at triangle, the N M N P, this big triangle here. Then the area of this triangle, which is the area, the entire space covered or occupied by this triangle, is equal to what? Is equal to the area of this of the is equal to the, this the area of this triangle here. So this triangle here. Call the area of this triangle here. So we can say this is area one, right? Plus what? Plus the plus this area here, area two. What is this? It's the area of this triangle here. You can say this is area two, right? Plus area three maybe. So here is area three. Plus what? Plus area four. Where is area four? Area four is this, is this part here, is this screen part here. So if you can find the area of a bigger triangle, right? It should be equal to this area, plus this area, plus this area, plus this area. Because the area covered by the big, by the big triangle is exactly the same as the area of these shapes that are pointed here. Right? The area of this big triangle is the same as the area of this one, plus this area, plus this area, plus that area. So, what you can say now, you can say the area of triangle, you can say the area of what? Of triangle M, P, M. So the big triangle is equal to what? It's equal to A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. These are all areas. And they are areas of this triangle, this triangle, this triangle, and this rectangle over here. So, you know that this is a rectangle, right? So, you know very well that a rectangle is a parallelogram. So, this side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side. So, this side is parallel to this side, and this is a transversal, or it's a common line, cutting both of these, right? So, if these two are parallel, then the corresponding angle should be equal. So this angle here should be equal to that angle there. So we know that this is 90 degrees and we have a perpendicular height there. Right? So we have to find the, we have to find the area of this triangle. So we have the base, we have the height. For this one, we have the, uh, what is it? We have the length and we have the breadth, right? Because the length we did calculate it to be EH, which is this one. And the breadth is B, no problem. If you look here, half base times height, no problem. Then we'll be able to find the area of this triangle here. Right? Fine. What do you do? Then, um, what are we missing? Then here, the base of this triangle, the base of this, tri of this triangle is exactly equal to the base of the rectangle. Because you can see that the triangle, the base of the triangle starts here, and ends there, which is equal to this from here to that one over there. Right? No problem. So what do we do? Um, what we do from here, also, maybe just for clarity, you know that the angles, uh, you know that the angles, the, the, the corners, uh, the angles uh, at the corners of your right angle are all 90 degrees, right? So this is also 90. And this is also 90, so that you can see that you have a right angle triangle. Fine. So what are we going to do now? So what we're going to do, we're going to try to find these areas. But now we have the base here to be the same as that of EH, because it will cause this side is equal to this side. We have a parallelogram here. Then um, the height here. You can see the entire height of MP of MD is three centimeters, right? But now the height of this triangle of of this triangle here, MFG, which is A1 in our case, is what? 
It's not going to be three because it's just a portion of that three. So we know that from here to there, the height is what? Is B. So from D to this point over here, the height is what? Is B. So now, this height here will be whatever is left after B has been removed. Right? So let's say this point is K here. So what we can say, we can say the entire height MD is equal to what? It's equal to MK plus what? Plus KD. We have MD to be what? To be 3 is equal to MK. MK is what you're trying to find. It's the height of the triangle of that you're trying to find. Plus KD, which is what? Which is B. Therefore, your MK is equal to what? It's equal to 3 minus B. So, you have, you have the height of MK, where is MK? This height here, to be 3 minus B. No problem. So what do we do from here? So now let's go and find our areas. So, the area of the triangle, MPN, is equal to half base, right? Times height. Because this triangle, here is it. Plus A1. What is A1? A1 is also a triangle. It's also going to be half base times height. Plus what? A2. What is A2? It's also a triangle. So it's going to be half base times height. Plus A3. A3 is also a triangle, which is half base times height. Plus A4. A4 is a what? It's a rectangle. What is a rectangle? It's going to be a length times breadth. That's what we have. So let's go and calculate this. Half base times height. So it's for the, the big triangle. Triangle MPN, right? Triangle MPN. The base is what? Is four. So the area is half of four times height, which is three. Is equal to what? Equal to the area of A1. What is A1? A1 is this area here, which is half the base FG. And because FG is a, is, a, is a rectangle, this side is equal to this side. And you know this side is equal to what? 4 minus 2x squared. So what you have here, you have half of 4 minus 2x squared times height of a rectangle, or half times the height which of A1, which is what? The height of A1 is 3 minus B, is what we just calculated here. Plus half of what? Of, of uh, now we're going to, we did this, A, we did this one, did this A, A1, now we go to A2. This A2 is half base times height. So half x squared times b. So we're done with A2. We're going to A3 now. A3 is the same thing. Half x squared times b, because the height is b, because this is the same as that. So, so we have half of x squared times b. Plus what? Times length times breadth. Length times breadth of what? Length, length times breadth of this rectangle over here. So let's do that. So the length is 4 minus what? 2x squared times breadth, which is b. Because we know the breadth to be b, there it is. So the only thing we're trying to solve for b here. Doesn't look very nice, but let's try and work it out and see how it goes. So the answer to this, punch it, find out this is 6 is equal to what? It's equal to half of the answer to this 4 times 3, that's 12. 4 times negative b minus, uh, what do you have? Minus uh, 4, oh sorry, minus 4b. Negative 2x squared times 3, so it's minus 6x squared plus 2bx squared. That's all we have. Plus, what is this? This is half. This is half of x squared b. That's what we have. And here we also have another half of x squared b. x squared b plus what? Plus this, which is 4 minus 2x squared times
times 3. I'm not sure if this is visible, but it's plus 4 minus 2x squared times b. Then, let's try to simplify this out. So we have 6 is equal to half times 12, that's 6. Half times minus 4b, that's negative 2b. This times that, that's minus 3x squared, right? Uh, half times that plus bx squared. Add these two, these are like terms. Half of xb plus half of xb. If you have to add two halves, you get a whole, right? So half of x plus half of x, that would be a full x. If you're adding half of xb plus another half of x, if you're adding half of x squared b and another half of x squared b, it's going to be a one x squared b. So, so here we have plus x squared b. Because this and this x squared b plus 4 minus 2x squared times b. That's what we get. So these two, they will cancel out because if you transpose this to this side, you will have 6 minus 6. This will go. Then what you want to do, you want to solve for b, right? So transpose anything that doesn't contain b on this side, right? Transpose it to this side. Or maybe, let me not cancel this out here. Let me not cancel out. And say 6, 6. Because we want to solve for B, let's just leave things that contain B on the side. Everything else that doesn't contain B, let's get rid of it. So what we're going to have, so, so we have 6 this side. Transpose the 6, minus 6. This one contains B, this one doesn't contain B. So plus 3x squared is equal to this one contains b, this one contains b, that one contains b. So everything that side contains b. So what you're left with that side, you're left with uh, minus 2b, right? Minus 3x, oh, minus 3x squared is gone. Plus bx squared. Actually, is it plus? Yes, it is. Uh, plus bx squared, plus bx squared as well, right? Because these are, these are exactly the same, but just the order. Plus 4 minus 2x squared, then times b outside. Plus 4 minus 2x squared times b outside. So this and this will go away, so we are left with 3x squared is equal to what? You take out b as a common factor here. So what you're left with, you, you, if you take out B as a common factor, let's take it and put it here. So what you're left with, you're left with negative 2 plus x squared plus x squared x squared plus x squared plus 4 minus 2 x squared. That's all you're left with. Because this times this is this, this times this is that this times this is that this times that or this two it will be this right then you collect the like terms inside so the 3x squared is equal to b into what into minus 2 plus 2x squared right plus 4 minus 2x squared then we'll collect the like terms so 3x squared is equal to b into what this and this, these are like terms. So negative 2 plus 4, that's 2. This and that will go away. That's what we're left with. So divide by 2, you divide by 2. What do you get? You get that the b is equal to 3 over 2 x squared. A is your b. So we found the value of b to 3 over 2 to be 3 over 2 x squared. Then let's take this 3 over 2 x squared and substitute it back here. Right, because that's what, that's why we're looking for b in the first place, so that we can solve it here and have everything else in terms of x. So what we have, you will have. I'm going to write this here. Your a area of a rectangle is called what? It's called four minus two x squared times b, which is three over two x squared. 
which is equal to what? This times this. So this 3 over 2x squared times this. So you have 4 times 3 over 2 x squared minus 2x squared times 3 over 2 x squared. Therefore, the area of a rectangle is equal to this times this. So this will be 6x squared minus these two will go away. This times that. So you are left with 3x to the power 4. So that is what we wanted to prove in the first place. So we are done. This is not a nice way of doing it. There are much nicer ways of doing this, but I would have to go back and explain some geometry, which is part of paper two. So I'm trying to avoid it by all means necessary and use logic. That will be straightforward, but the work will be very unnice and very uncomfortable to do. And we're done with this question. So I'm going to clean the board and then we'll go to question, uh, what is it? Question 10.2 and we'll be done with this question. Okay, so now we're doing 10.2. 10.2 read as follows. Calculate the maximum area of rectangle EFGH. So they want us to calculate the maximum area of this. Right? No problem. In the previous question 10.1, we proved that the area of is defined by this. The area of, of interest, which is EFGH, is defined by this function here. Right? So now, they don't want just any area. They want the maximum area. So you can see that this area is defined by this function here. Right? This area of a rectangle as a function of x is defined by this function here. So if you want the maximum area, go and find the maximum of this function. That's what you want to do. I'm saying, let me repeat this thing again. The, this triangle this rectangle of interest, its area is defined by this function, right? So if the area of this triangle is defined by this function and you are interested in finding the maximum area, then what you need to do, you need to go and find the turning point of your function that defines your area, where the, the maximum turning point is sitting of this function. That's where your maximum area is because the, this Function defines your area. This function is your area. So finding that maximum will be finding, finding where the maximum area is sitting. That's what you need to do. And you know how to find the maximums and minimums. Because when you're doing cubic function, if you want to find a maximum, you which or minimum, local maximum, local minimum, you first derive, right? And you know the derivative gives you a gradient at a point. And the gradient at the local maximum and the local minimum is zero. Then you equate your derivative, your derived equation to zero because you know the equation, the derivative, the gradient there is zero. So you want the corresponding x values where the gradient is zero. You're going to do follow the same logic here. So what we'll do, we'll first derive this and get that a prime at x is equal to four times uh, negative three plus minus twelve x cubed plus two times six plus six x. Actually, I'm plus 6 plus 12x because 2 times 6 is 12. Then, what you can see here, this is the derivative now of a function that represents the area. So now, you want the maximum area, which means you want the turning point of this function. And you know at the turning point, if you draw a tangent at the turning point, this gradient is 0, which means this part is the gradient of your function of interest. So this part should be 0. So... This part, our current is zero there of our function. So 12x cubed, right, plus 12x. So from here, just solve for x. So zero is equal to 12x into x squared. Uh, oh, sorry. Minus x squared. Uh, minus x squared plus 1. Right? 
So the f of so 12x is equal to 0 or the negative x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. So therefore, the x is equal to 0 or can work out on this one now. So you can have negative the x plus 1 and x minus 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to 1 or x equal to minus 1 x called minus 1 or x called 1. So these are the possible 3x values. But you want the maximum area. But look, what is x? x were constituting your dimensions there. So if your x is 0, what do you have? So this is not there. So let's get rid of this. This is not possible. We can't have x is 0. If we had dimensions that were x squared and x squared and 4 minus x squared, so 4 minus 0, so which, that would mean that this rectangle is exactly the size of this triangle, which is not possible. So get rid of that. But these you can accept because if you square the x squared, they are both positive. So now you know that your maximum is sitting at this point or that point. So substitute this to original and then you find your maximum. Because these are the positions where your possible maximum are sitting. So substitute these two, because they will come out the same anyway, since they are both negative. Actually, since this is these, uh, will positive them out. So what you do, you can say your a, uh, x is equal to minus 3, x to the power 4 plus 6, x squared. Right? So your a at um, plus or minus 1 should be the same. 3 plus or minus 1 or 4 plus 6 plus or minus 1 squared. Right? So this is 3 and this is 6. So this looks like it's going to be 3 centimeter squared. Looks like our area will come out like that. Because this is 1 and this is 1. So you have minus 3 plus 6. So that is 6 minus 3. So that looks like the area will look like something like that. So the maximum area of this is of this rectangle is 3 square units. While the area of the triangle was 6 square units. So it's what done here. And I hope it does make sense to you as it does to me. Thank you for watching.